Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to Intel's plans for the desktop, there has been a lot of confusion. At the moment, of course, we're on the 13th generation processors, known as Raptor Lake, but things get a lot more complicated going forward, and that is putting it mildly, as Intel's plans seem to change significantly between mobile, in other words, let's say laptops, versus desktops. And this point has perhaps even been the most contentious when it comes to Meteor Lake. So, um, there is a very interesting image which has appeared on Twitter thanks to Bionic Squash. And you can see that right now we are indeed in Raptor Lake S territory. So LJ1700, I'm not going to read out all of this stuff because, well, most of it's pretty well established at this point since it's an actual product that you can buy right now. And of course, the SKU goes up to i9 with support for both DDR4 and DDR5. Now, again, to re you know refresh your memory, this is the 13th generation. But if you cast your eyes to the right, good sir or good madam, you'll notice that, of course, the socket changes to LGA1851. And this is unified across Meteor Lake S as well as Arrow Lake S. But you will also spot that the SKU for Meteor Lake S goes up to I5 and I9 for Arrow Lake S. Uh, S. Now, there is some difference in core count, and I'll get into that in a second based upon my own information, but this does seem to tally up what a couple of sources had told me in the past. Long story short, Meteor Lake and Arrow Lake will be part of the same generation of processor. So this will essentially be the 15th generation. So you're going to say, wait a minute, well, what about the 14th generation? Well, that's where Raptor Lake Refresh comes in. There is no significant difference between the refresh and the current Raptor Lake to my understanding. I've heard some folks mention it could be additional cash, but I don't think that's the case. I'd love to be wrong, but I don't think that's true. Instead, I think it's a shuffling around of the core counts. Specifically, the mid-range in particular gets the, well, just a higher number of energy efficient cores. And I also believe that there's some tweaks in terms of energy efficiency, improved clock frequency, you know, yada, yada, yada. There's nothing really super interesting. It's not like they've bolted on Vcash or something like that, which of course would be really cool. Shifting though to Meteor Lake S and Arrow Lake S discussions, well, again, you can see the difference. Basically, the lower end SKUs will be taken care of by Meteor Lake S, and the higher end SKUs will, of course, be taken care of Arrow Lake. Now, this becomes confusing not just because of core counts, again, we'll get to that in a second, but also the fact that these architectures are inherently different. So, for example, there is higher IPC on Arrow Lake, although the exact percentage and improvement hasn't been exactly confirmed yet. Now, it does seem that Meteor Lake and Arrow Lake will also support DDR5 only for their stop. So, basically speaking, if you're still clinging on to that DDR4 memory, which has served you with, let's say, even the mid-range 1300th, uh, 13th generation, 1300, geez, um, 13th generation series, well, you're probably going to need to ditch it, much like uh, AMD, of course, has forced you to do with the AM5 platform. I've already spoken about this in a previous video in terms of the core counts, but the gist is when it comes to the core counts for both Meteor Lake as well as Arrow Lake, there have been, well, let's just say some changes. So, for example, Meteor Lake S is 6 plus 8. So, of course, um, we are looking at 6 performance cores, 8 energy efficient cores. Now, early uh, reports for Arrow Lake was that it would go up to 32 hyper, um, sorry, energy efficient cores, so 32 energy efficient cores, but that has also been shaved down to just half that number. So to be ultra clear with you guys, there will be eight performance cores known as Lion Cove architectures, and then there will be 16 efficient cores, which of course will be based upon Skymont. And again, there will be motherboard intercompatibility. There's not a whole lot more I really need to say about these processors. Ultimately, um, there's been a lot of conflicting information concerning their performance, and obviously it is a little bit early to talk about it. I have been told that um, Arrow Lake may have up to a 20% increase over Meteor Lake in terms of IPC, but frankly, I will only believe that when I'm physically able to test the processors or there is some type of official announcement, because honestly, when it comes to performance, 
um you know one leak one goal can kind of just take over and it may not be something that's actually achieved or even if it is achieved it may not actually be indicative of cross multiple benchmarks maybe it's a very specific benchmark again it's very difficult to know at this point but it's going to be very interesting to see how arrow lake as well as the rest of intel's lineup does end up performing i think that's just about it though for this particular video just a quick one as i just want to give you guys a quick update with that said though take care of yourselves have an amazing day bye for now